Yes, please. Come cousin's in. sister has married an Air Force officer who is now retired as a union. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please take your seat. Thank you so much, sir. You look like you have some army background. <laughs> so maybe because of the haircut. <laughs> but nothing, you never did NCC or something? Uh, so the option was not available at the school. Uh. We did have a road safety patrol, RSP, but we didn't have NCC in our school. But the way you also stand and everything. <laughs> Is it like uh, Satara in general and Man in particular <laughs> has this glorious tradition of sending one person to army? Mm. So you are behaving like that one person. It's a very good compliment, sir. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> and I believe, sir, somewhere we have the tradition of from Shivaji Maharaj times only to have that. And so that it's a good thing, I guess. There is one village in Satara district, which is known as military something. You remember the name of that village? Sir, it is Apshingi, sir. Uh, why is it called military Apshingi? Uh, sir, because almost every individual, uh, pardon sir, every individual from every home has been into some of the armed forces or the naval forces or for the matter air forces. So that is one of the reasons for it, sir. Right. Why has Man block remained slightly undeveloped or backward all these years? So, Man Taluka or Man Block is notoriously as one of the most drought prone areas of Satara district. And geographically, it lies to the leeward side of the what we call as Mahadev Hills, which are the extension of Sayyadris. And apart from that, sir, somewhere the water conservation practices and also the practices of community, uh, what we say community agriculture, are not quite well developed. But there are certain positives. For example, sir, in the recent uh, wave of Pani Foundation, Mantaluka performed quite well and uh, hopefully things are going positive and we are just hoping to get things better, sir. What are the irrigation projects underway there? So, one was the Jalyuk Chivar Yojana, which was in vogue. And secondly, sir, also there is thrust that is given for drip and sprinkler irrigation system as of now. And in a recent example, lift irrigation systems have also been placed where we also have a project called Jihe Katapur. I am talking of irrigation projects, attempts Pardon. to bring water to Man Block. Uh, sir, in that regard only, sir, a Jihe Katapur project has been signed up wherein water from upper riparian areas are to be transferred from Krishna river to the Man river, which will be beneficial for the irrigation for the farmers in the block of the Mantaluga. What is the current situation of Urmodi Prakalp? Uh, pardon sir, lately I have not followed it, but uh, waters were, uh, I guess, due to the efforts of the our MLA also, there have been positives in this regard and it is quite on the work to be implemented in near future. What is your take on current position of politics in Maharashtra? So, it is definitely not a very pleasant sight as to there have been instability when it comes to politics and uh, somewhere this also tends to the loss of, loss of confidence on the account of individuals as well, sir, or the citizens of Maharashtra. So that is definitely should be worked upon. I kind of wonder you had your LLB from ILS Law College, which is considered as among top 10 in India. Yes. Why didn't you choose law as your optional? Why anthropology? So I had already invested five years in law. So I wanted to go for an optional with which I can start with new vigor. And sir, besides that, from the impending or from the options that I had, I chose anthropology because it somewhere helps me to deal with the areas or the areas of public service as well. For example, it has rural development, tribal welfare, also problems related to urbanization and etc. which is mentioned. And finally, sir, the sources are also decently available in market when it comes to anthropology. In fact, your very first statement, I had already invested five years in law. Is that not the reason why you should actually pick up law? Um, sir, 
I did not intend to be a specialist in law and whatever general knowledge that I wanted, I had already gathered it from the five years. And what, in my opinion, sir, somewhere we get a complacency when we deal with the same subjects. So it also helped me to diversify and law was always with me in the form of quality, sir. So I did not have that. Then you also discussion. argued that anthropology would help you in administration. Actually, honestly, will anthropology help you more or law will help you more in administration? Definitely, sir. Law will help yeah. me more. Mm. But anthropology will definitely help to supplement it, sir. Yeah. Did you like any particular thinker in anthropology? So, there were many thinkers, but uh, somewhere the works of Iravati Karve are quite fascinating in those regards because she was the first female anthropologist and uh, her work is quite commendable, sir. Can you sort of summarize her work on the composition of Hindu society? Uh, sir, I have not read the exact works of her, sir. But uh, somewhere she has mentioned, uh, she has works on kinship organization. And also, sir, when it comes to her works, if I am allowed to take a guess, it was mostly the position of females when it comes to Hindu society. Mm. And no, point is, you are citing her name. According to me, it's a great name, but you are volunteering to say that she is like your favorite or she appealed to you more. So you should be in a position to summarize her anthropological thinking. Sir, I, uh, when it comes to specific work, sir, I am unable to recall big names. I just know that Kinship Organization in India was one of her books. And there is one more book, sir, which I am unable to recall as of now, sir. But okay. I will definitely go and read more on yeah. it, sir. All the very best. Thank you so much. Uh, let that confidence continue. Man will talk to you. Few names which I have asked others also. I will post them to you also if they ring a bell. <laughs> Giorgio Meloni. <laughs> Pardon ma'am. I will read more on to it. Huh? Doesn't ring it's a bell not at all? Any bell. Okay, never mind. Uh, Jacinda Ahern. Uh, yes ma'am. Uh, she was the former... Uh, a, pre a, prime, a premier of New Zealand <coughs> and she has recently uh, made a wish that she don't want to continue with the politics. Yes. Uh, Georgia Meloni was recently elected the prime prime minister of Italy. Thanks for the insight, yeah. ma'am. How right can you forget her? <laughs> for a nice name also. <laughs> <laughs> I must have skipped it somewhere. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, what is PLI? Ma'am, it is Production Linked Incentive Scheme that is been put in place to have a thrust to Atmanirbhar Bharat. And uh, through it, uh, a certain amount of rebates, for example, 4% to 6% will be given on the production sales to the industry so that they can have a boost and trust to it. Not rebate, incentive. Incentives. Not Thanks. Rebate. Okay. Which are the important sectors uh, that is covered mm -hmm. under it and what are the major objectives under it? Ma'am, uh, if I were to recall some of the sectors, there were sectors like uh, textiles. Apart from that, there is manufacturing and defense. Thirdly, uh, there is also solar chip manufacturing. Uh, fourthly, uh, I am not quite sure into mm -hmm. this, but uh, drone manufacturing is also one of okay, the Okay, you read upon it because it is a scheme under which lots of money is being spent. Yes. And major are uh, mobile phone manufacturing, <coughs> auto components. Okay, so these are expected to be the major, uh, and they are also supposed to bring in investment. Yes, definitely. So please read up on the latest <coughs> analysis of this man by Raghuram Rajan. He has given a very good analysis. Okay, uh, then uh, since you are from Satara, Prati Sarkar. Uh, Ma'am, during 1942 Quit India movement, parallel governments were set up in various areas of India. So one of them was Prati Sarkar, which was set up in Maharashtra under the leaderships of Yashwantra Bhavarav Chavan, also Kranti Siya Nana Patil, Mahat. and uh, there were also Nana Saheb for that uh, were one of the lead leaders in this regard. 
and they also had a tufan sena tufan which was an armed wing of yes. prati sarkar is there any memorial in satara for this very <coughs> brave part of satara's history pardon me ma'am i have not visited oh. any if there there is. isn't any as far as my information goes uh another very famous son of satara won india's first uh, individual medal in olympic ma'am mm. so kashaba zadav ha yes one yes, for yes, wrestling yes yes has he been given enough recognition in even in maharashtra forget the country ma'am uh, one uh, as you rightfully pointed out ma'am one of the issues which i came across in my limited knowledge was he had to even fight for his pension mm. at the early, uh, at the latest years of his life so somewhere as a nation we could have acted better mm. and definitely but on ground realities today are quite different yes. wherein we are respecting our alums yes yes who is a woke ma'am uh, in my little knowledge it is something to do with millennial culture this is and woke is something if i am allowed to guess it is someone who is very tech savvy and who has an understanding or who deems that he or she has an understanding of the current events better than the others uh this is not quite it you better read upon it because it's a very common word and it's a is spreading in western civil western countries so Definitely. it means somebody who is desperately wanting to be politically correct what is cancel Thanks culture ma'am uh, one of the trends that currently we are facing is that there's boycott of individuals or their works <coughs> for that matter movies etc so that is the culture which we also call as boycott culture or cancel culture cancel culture is a little different from boycott culture you read upon it sure ma'am okay uh what do you think has been the latest developments in the field of cryptocurrency one of the developments that we had was uh, our finance minister rightfully had mentioned earlier that uh, though it is not regulated but we are free to tax it it is a sovereign right to tax it so that is one of the developments when 30% of the taxes have been imposed on it Right. secondly uh, we are also trying or we are also appealing the nations to have a singular or unified law because it is a cross border phenomena and definitely we need to have more information on it and collective efforts are needed what has mr shaktikant das said about cryptocurrency couple of days ago pardon me ma'am i am not able to ring any bell what he has said in in essence <coughs> that it is rubbish don't put money on it and you know are you aware of the fate <coughs> of this very uh, smart alec american young man who had islands in bahamas and what was that guy who was arrested frank uh, you read upon him have you uh, you have any idea of that uh, no ma'am i'll definitely read yeah you read it. because cryptocurrency sure, is even i'm forgetting his name He, he was a smart aleck and he built a whole empire, empire. around it and finally it collapsed like from ponzi from 100 billion dollars to zero <laughs> yes and you know what's a ponzi FTX. ponzi what's ponzi ftx kind of ha 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 ftx ftx yes we know what is ponzi i am aware of the ponzi schemes that is mostly those schemes which uh if i am able to illustrate it it somewhere goes like a can give money to three people wherein he can further give it to six nine or in those multiples wherein the money from those individuals only is circulated amongst themselves mm -hmm. and no new money is created as such but it gives an as an exp, an expression that a new money is created it's somewhat true but it is causing a lot of uh, misery to the common people of india so you better read up what is this ponzi scheme sure ma'am yeah thank you thank you sir thank you omkar yes sir you give me a look that you already in ips <laughs> yes he yes, uh, is yes. very good so much yes, very good and uh, anybody would be impressed to have a person like that mm. and with the knowledge flowing there nothing like mm. you tell me you saw the 26 january 
Uh, pardon sir, I was traveling, that's why I did not see the tableau as such. Okay. I know how it But uh, did you read about it? What was the thrust of the Republic Day Parade? Yes, uh, one of it was definitely the invitees. The Egyptian Premier was invited to India, wherein we intended to build strong strategic relationships. Secondly, uh, there was a female office. There were female officers uh, that mm. were representing various contingents. That was one of those things. And thirdly, sir, if I am able to recall that most of the states uh, that had their tableau focused on Atmanirbharta. So those are some things that I am able to recall. Sir. And Nari Shakti. Yeah, it's, uh, yes, sir, definitely, sir, Nari Shakti. <clears throat> what are your views on modernization of military? Sir, there are definitely positives to it because we import a lot of our defense equipments. So it will help us to bridge the fiscal deficit that we face because of it. Secondly, as uh, we talked earlier, sir, we are also planning to have defense deals with Egypt as well, wherein Egypt is one of the defense importers and we can actually export defense equipments to them. And thirdly, sir, we, there should be a caution or there should be a caveat to it, wherein uh, we should be quite transparent in the process and also nuclear mishandling should not be there. You spoke of Egypt now. Yes. There is a very nice thing, this is Yunan, this is a room. Everything is gone where it is. Now, there is a rest of the name of Nisha. He was the Mishra of the Rastapati, the chief guest. He said, Yunan, this is a room. Everything is gone where it is. Mishra of the Rastapati. Are you aware of the, uh, you know, when the, Tanks go along the Kartavya path. Can you recollect some incident that occurred with the Egyptian president in such a thing? Somewhere. No, no not this one, anywhere. Pardon, sir, I'll read on to it, sir. I'm unable to take a diligent guess, that's why I don't want to. No, no, what is it? Make a guess. Let us see. What do you guess? Uh, it might have been a situation. Pardon me, I'm no, very. <laughs> It might be have been a situation where there would have been a lapse when it comes to security and uh, there might be an incident where an official who was not supposed to be with the premier or to be the head went on and would have wanted to be there. <coughs> the Egyptian president was assassinated. In a parade in, in Egypt. In Egypt. When the tanks gave a salute, the, ta <laughs> the cannon took him off and there is a for many years, even on our Kartala path, the tanks never gave salute to the president. They would only bend down. Like. So this was something very shocking <laughs> to know also. <laughs> what is your view on theatrization? Have you heard this word, theatrization? Yes, uh, theatrization, uh, the uh, mostly it is in terms of the having a theatre command when it comes to the armed forces, wherein all three, the facets of our armed forces, that is Army, Navy and Air Force, can work in unison and can actually have or can actually go for practices that will help when there is collective danger and it also will help to have a quick response to it and that too from all the sides. Which Chinese theatre is facing India? Uh, pardon, sir, I am unable to recall any names as of now, sir. What is the threat from China to India? So, there are multiple threats from China to India. Uh, firstly, when it comes to borders, that there is always some or the other activity that Chinese notoriously do it. Secondly, when it comes to the string of pearls policy of China, wherein it has been showing aggression and trying to raise its cloud. Thirdly, when it comes to economics, <coughs> so it has trying to play a dead trap diplomacy with various nations and trying to win them on their side. So these are some of the threats that we definitely have. What did China do to Djibouti? Uh, with Djibouti also, sir, uh, it uh, invested a lot there in, in Djibouti and there is also a naval base in Djibouti for China, wherein it is stated that it might used for other it might use actually for other purposes in, rather than the those mandated for security ones how do you see ukraine russia war does it benefit china so one of the findings or one of the uh, if i am able to put it in words that 
one of the things that is being said that China may follow the same policy with Taiwan or its uh, uh, the Hong Kong for that matter, wherein if the world community or if Russia has a successful attempt in this regard, China will definitely try to imp uh, try to have a more sphere of influence. That is one of the things. And secondly, I guess, sir, there is always an opportunity for China to increase its world trade in that regard because supply chains have been disrupted. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yes. Good evening. How are you? Good evening, Rajin. sir. I am doing good, sir. Thank you so much. Good. Okay. Being a law student, can you tell me the difference uh, or define judicial overreach versus judicial activism? So, judicial overreach refers to the judiciary entering in the domain of the legislature or the executive. Whereas, judicial activism is something positive which deals with pro proactive work of the judiciary or the governance. Okay. Now, you would be aware of PILs, which is very, very much in fashion in a way, because for every small thing, somebody goes and files a PIL. Uh, I will name one or two. Please, can you tell me what they are about? MC Mehta versus Union of India. So there are various cases of MC Mehta versus Union, but some of them are. One is of oleum gas leak case. No, I'm giving you the case MC Mehta versus Union of India. Pardon, it's sir. a very significant PIL. Sir, uh, there have been various many cases from MC Mehta. Mm -hmm. One of okay. them was oleum gas. Okay. Okay. Another one. Uh, one was the about the Taj trapezium zone, and there was also about the uh, pollution of uh, velo tanneries. And if I am able to recall, there was also one more from the MP where a river was polluted. Ganga. Ganga river pollution. Ganga river pollution. Thanks for the insights. Vishakha versus state of Rajasthan. Uh, sir, it dealt with the sexual harassment of the workplace of women, wherein guidelines were also issued by the Supreme Court. Sir. Musannar Khatun versus State of Bihar. Um, sir, it was a case of under trial pri prisoners, and it was mandated that they are also human beings and they should be treated, and their right to life should not be violated. Uh, it was about the under trials, but the subject was slightly different. Under trials, poorer ones who had spent more time in uh, jail as under trials, then their sentence, maximum sentence would have been. Because of which the whole thing was reviewed and 40,000 people were then released. Thanks, so they are already in jail for 2-3 years. Had they been convicted, they would have got one year sentence. So that is also one of the lapses of right. Javed versus state of Haryana. I'll have to read more on to it, sir. More on to it? The Haryana government's order of two child norm for those who want to contest elections was upheld. <coughs> Can you tell us about, we'll make it a last question because the answer, if you have it, may be slightly longer. Law as a means of social reform, with some examples. So, Indian or uh, from any context, if I am able to give, sir? Well, for example, child marriage, Sharda Act. It was enfo law enforced that social reform. Some other example? Yes, uh, uh, prohibition of Sati, sir. That mm -hmm. was also one of the reforms. Secondly, raising the marriageable age of children. Fourthly, mm -hmm. uh, one of the reforms was to have a cap on ch uh, child labor or children to be worked uh, using working in hazardous child places. labor act child labor act uh, fourthly sir the poxo act is definitely a welcome legislation in that regard which is also gender neutral where it comes to harassment of children and fourthly sir if i am able to point out sir there have been legislations wherein we are also providing Opportunities for employment also for individuals. I am able to recall the legislation as such, but in that regard, sir. sir. And uh, also outside India also, sir, if I were to give an example, abolition of slavery in America through legislation was one of the biggest social reforms. Social reform. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir.
Hello, Omkar. How are you? Hello, sir. Oh, I'm well. good, sir. Thank you, sir. Good. Just to continue with the law thing, what is the doctrine of pith and substance? Sir, it refers to the ascertainment of a legislation in its true sense, that is in letter and spirit, sir. And uh, mostly it is to have the, one should focus on the spirit of the law rather than just the, what the, what is mentioned in it, sir. That. So, what does the doctrine of pith and substance allow? What does it give you? What is the benefit of having a doctrine like this? Uh, so, sometimes what may happen is that interpretation of law may vary from individuals, wherein we must take care that the underlying intention of the statute should be followed up and that is why the doctrine is in, in process. If I were to state it, sir, it somewhere helps us to go for the due process of law, sir. Okay, reform it. Is there some anomaly or shortcoming uh, in the constitution which allows for a conflict between the governor and the chief minister? Sir, constitution is silent on some of the issues wherein the political color is given to those issues. <laughs> for example, uh, the powers of governor <coughs> must not to be confused with the powers of those enjoyed by the president. So this is one of the thing and secondly sir, uh, chief ministers are definitely the elected head of the state. So they carry the mandate of the people. So any clashes between them should be avoided sir. You are from Satara. Yes. So an obvious question I want to ask you because I want to know is why are there two heads of the Maratha kingdom? One in Satara and one in Kolhapur. Maratha Empire. Eh? Maratha Empire. <laughs> Sorry, Empire. <laughs> Samraj. <laughs> so there's a historical reason for it, mm. sir. Wherein, uh, after Sambhaji Maharaj, there was chaos when it came when it came to Maratha Empire. So wherein uh, the Shahu Maharaj, who was also the then successor, was also held by the Mughals or was captivated by the Mughals. So in his absence. His aunt Tarabai was the one who had the reins of Maratha Empire in the name of Chhatrapati Rajaram. So okay. I got it. What is the relationship between the Chhatrapati and the Peshwa? So Chhatrapati, as it as the name mentioned, is the conqueror or is hmm. the believer of the Chhatra, that is the royal umbrella. And he was the king, if I were to put it in words, and Peshwa was his prime minister. But all the battles were fought by the Peshwas. The Chhatrapati's name doesn't come in. Sir, what uh, allowed that to happen? Sir, a positive side to it was uh, there was mutual understanding as well as respect for each other between Peshwa and Chhatrapati. And whereas Chhatrapati was confident that Peshwa won't usurp power to be the Chhatrapati. And also, sir, a negative point to it was that post Shivaji Maharaj or Sambhaji Maharaj, the Maratha leaders or the Chhatrapatis were not that powerful in having a unification of Maharashtra. So, somewhere Peshwa played a key role in that way. So. Okay, you play volleyball. Yes. Sir. There are two forms of volleyball. One is as you play it in the court, which is the other. Sir, if you are if the sir is referring to shoot ball or beach volleyball. Yeah, beach volleyball. Yes. Are there identical games, the number of players different, uh, anything you know about beach volleyball? Pardon? Or are there two separate games altogether? Yes, they are two separate games altogether, sir. And to put it in words, sir, I am not a big fan of beach volleyball, so I don't watch it that much, sir. Uh, not a uh, big fan after having played it or without having played it? <laughs> <laughs> sir, it mostly has uh, two individuals on each team, sir. Mm. So. That is a very small team, the smallest team that we can have, sir. And precisely, sir, the beaches are also not quite conducive in, conducive in India to go for that game, sir. Don't give that answer before knowing whom you are playing with. <laughs> Definitely, sir. Okay. Why admit after Maharashtra? So, to be very honest in that regard, mm -hmm. I had some insights from my seniors wherein I was in talks with them, wherein uh, they were of the opinion that it can be something which can, it can be a cadre wherein more opportunities can be given to you. And also, there won't be monotony of work. 
so the desired variety can be available over there sir. so you would go by what your seniors give in such major decisions uh, no sir definitely not uh, but it is always good to have something as insightful definitely having more research on to it sir uh, end of the day wherever i am going to work there is a strict line there is a something that we call implementation of the policies in letter and spirit so that is something which i'll be doing sir. run for green marathon did you actually run the marathon or just ran a bit uh, sir i was the chief organizer along with my team and the uh, the objective behind it was uh, ils the uh, the alma mater it has a vast variety of hills hilly areas and forests so what had happened was there were incidences of wanton felling of trees over there so that was an issue which was to be addressed and also our pe teacher has told me that we should also focus more on the fitness of the individuals because there were cases where it was reported that the timings of the institution for example we were supposed to be at 7 am uh, in our college for our lectures so it has <coughs> made somewhere student as lethargic so there should be a drive which can actually help them to focus on health you already have a system called vana mahotsav have you heard of that yes sir i have heard of that but wouldn't uh, vana mahotsav be a better uh, way of uh, you know achieving your objectives of tree plantation so that <coughs> <is> running <coughs> a marathon <coughs> so definitely it would have been but at that point of time i was not aware of the mahotsav sir so because of Om, that ignorance omkar is the name of which god uh, sir it is it is name of god ganpati in maharashtra we call ganesh lord ganesh is it not one of the names of lord shiva uh, sir om is associated with lord shiva but omkar is mostly associated with ganpati and i was when i was born on 27 september it was also time of ganesh utsav so i was named after that shiv sharakshar shows the begins with omkar bindu thank you sir for the insight okay. i'll definitely okay. thank you omkar thank Wish you all the best thank you omkar all the best thank you so thank much you. sir by the way let us start with the last question <laughs> uh, because I, there i can't hold myself back <laughs> Om Omkar is all God. Okay. So that didn't. It is the symbolic it. sound that represents the one and only one, the Brahma. Or so it is for Shiva. It is for Vishnu. And Ganpati, you are right. Akar, Madhya, Makar, Udara, Vishal. this is sant nyaneshwar mm -hmm. and actually symbolically the very figure of ganpati represents akar ukar and makar together mm -hmm. but omkar represents which is a sound of creation all god all god all, all i mean even in sikhism sikhism also all jainism buddhism ek omkar sat naam ha all bharatiya philosophies all of them agree on this one basic point that omkar represents ultimate truth it is ultimate truth with capital d t sentence from vedas is tasya vachakah pranavah tasya vachakah is its representatives it pranavah is omkar now excellent interview omkar i am very happy to see you a manje mast confident ho थैंक यू जसा असलाच पाहिजे आणि सगळे इंटरव्ह्यू टेक्निक ओव्हरऑल छान सर्व आता मी सांगणार आहे हे काही कमी आहे म्हणून नाही तर आपल्या हाताशी दिवस आहे ब्रशअप करायचा आहे आणि जेव्हा केव्हा शेड्यूल अनाऊन्स होईल तेव्हाचा इंटरव्ह्यू लाईक बेटर दॅन बेस्ट असं आउटस्टँडिंग त्याच्यासाठी असं काही आज काही कमी आहे किंवा असं नाही काही नाव when we are discussing your optional subject that instead of law why did you take anthropology mm. ha ata don goshti beginning with this 
आई ऑब्जर्व अ रिदमिक टेंडेंसी क्या सर चेहरा अशे आठी तैयार होते बोलता ना वीडियो पाशील तो लक्ष दे आणि प्रैक्टिस करके नको थी ओके सर व्हाट हैपेंड वाज दैट आई डिड अ ब्लंडर आई वाज ट्राइंग टू शो एज इफ आई वाज थिंकिंग अपॉन इट और कॉन्टेम्प्लेटिंग अपॉन इट सो इट मस्ट हैव वेंट रॉन्ग आई बिलीव गुड दैट यू आर सेइंग दिस यस बिकॉज दैट ऑल्सो गिव्स मी ऑपॉर्चुनिटी टू से वन वेरी वाइटल थिंग द थिंग इज डोंट ट्राई टू बी एनीथिंग इन द इंटरव्यू जस्ट बी Hmm. this uh, trying to take a pose ha to or trying to think on just it. be natural uh, if you are actually thinking then think but no need to give an impression to the panel like i am thinking and then the sentence you used was i had already invested 5 years in law huh but that invested the word may be invested your tone sounded like wasted, wasted. <laughs> <laughs> and once you made the logic clear i had already invested 5 years in law so i picked up anthropology mm mm-hmm. ha that didn't so by implication it means what you mean to say actually is you had wasted 5 years in 5 years which most of the ils students do <laughs> don't worry <laughs> Ajay, that's a five-year course. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. After twelfth, oh, it's a special BSL LLB. Three plus two. Okay, okay. Hmm. Like bachelor. Then, uh, so, uh, sorry, sir. Uh, no, please. You, you know the when you gave that uh, you know justified anthropology, you go through you all the justifications you gave seem to be for sociology and not anthropology. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Definitely, I hmm. see to it. Sir, what can be? How can I put it in better? Uh, better way or how can i rephrase it that i had spent 5 years in law yeah now within my basic uh, uh, like uh, firm principle about the interview the framework is all your on- honest answers that is the framework hmm. yes sir so how do we put it based on what you said i would say that sir i wanted to look for a new subject i wanted to use this as an opportunity to study a new subject should not have mentioned only about 5 years huh. and all law is fine the study of constitution will help me in uh, uh, upsc also and later on in the service but i want also wanted to use this as an opportunity to study new thing by the way i will also therefore tell you that the way you were thinking hmm, actually shows a good generalist officer in you that is what ias ips are all about mm-hmm. basically ias is supposed to be generalist so new posting after every 2 years it's always a new challenge and unless you let uh, ego or arrogance go to your head that every new challenge is a new learning opportunity which enriches you and a greater responsibility about the society and all and within no time you are supposed to establish your command over administration wherever you are posted so a tendency i mean psychologically speaking you reflected the tendency to develop into a good generalist officer but that will be as long as you put your point of view uh, in a proper way then if you say anthropology pick up iravati karve as the thinker who appealed to you and then fail to answer that is going to cost you marks so she was a great anthropology she was great everything she was great writer great social reformer great daughter of a great person also gave birth to great uh, uh, daughters herself um, uh, uh, the whole pedigree the whole karve family is all great people but you must be able to point out actually her most important work is hindu samaj ek anvayartha sir what it i was not in touch with anthropology uh, only sir i had but why pick up in irawati karve then Because Why mention Irawati Karve as the anthropological thinker? I like, sir. That was a very honest answer because I definitely feel because she was the one because of whom the entire female anthropologist tradition picked up. And uh, no, the point is I I have, I have seen that you have got the point that you say as your Irawati Karve, and then fail to explain mm-hmm. her th- uh, anthropological thought. That will cost you marks. Yes, sir. 
and now some smaller points all are smaller points yes. you are referring to uh, lady heads of state or government when madam was asking mm -hmm. melory george okay. jasin dardan huh? what you said is prime minister of new zealand <coughs> uh, who doesn't want to be prime minister or something to that effect mm -hmm. your wording uh, made it clear that you are not aware that she has already resigned and there is a new prime minister for uh, new zealand already then while talking about prati sarkar you mentioned under the leadership of yashwantrao chavan mm -hmm. mm -hmm. not right he was also one of he was a junior member at that point of time mm -hmm. the leader was kranti sinha nana mm -hmm. saheb patil yashwantrao chavan participated but at that point of time he was a junior uh, uh, member of the team i must have written it uh, yeah. i'll correct it sir then uh, are you wearing this dress because someone has asked you that this should be the dress sir i have a grey suit huh. which i i want to wear that only but because whatever this is my third mock and almost everywhere i am seeing people with navy blue only hmm. so <laughs> that I, is because in some coaching places in delhi <laughs> people are being told ha but sir i am going with the grey one yeah this and is, the tie Uh, tile change, sir. Tile ah, change. It will ah, be great. Yeah. This is just so, for the mock. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, but in fact, I would suggest you to avoid the standard navy blue and blue ah, tie, etc. Yes. Yeah, I can tell you that even UPSC panel members are fed, fed up with up. that dress. <laughs> I was myself fed up, sir. I saw <laughs> many. I saw every other person in navy blue on this. We are something different. They may give you yeah. five marks for that. Yeah. For yeah. yeah. being brave. Yeah. You have a button. Talk. Yes, sir. No, it's closed. Yeah, it's closed. Yeah, I'll answer. Then about Khasaba Zadhav and justice to him, huh? Hmm. It may help you to know that while unfortunately, as long as Khasaba Zadhav was there, I am myself sorry he was neglected. Hmm. But in 1995. the first home that the chief minister granted to the sports person was to his wife ha huh? and i am instrumental in doing that <laughs> thank you that was a very big initiative secretary to see her yeah <laughs> pardon sir who was the chief minister manohar joshi sena bjp government came to power it is that 10% quota with the chief minister uh, i i was picked up by the chief minister to run the office and so i insisted that they, we have been unfair to kasha bazado we have to do justice so the that 10% quota flat so if the issue comes sir i think they have announced a statue of his also Now, yeah, recently yeah, no? yeah. a statue and educational institution no. devoted to sports, sports. Okay. will henceforth be called the kasha bazado academy And I applied for same to S B Chavan. He didn't give it. Great. Ah, <laughs> I'm the sure answer. Wow. He didn't. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Then again, as again the standard places in Delhi are teaching youngsters to sit like this. Mm. Mm. So I'm suggesting don't do that. Be natural. Don't be stiff. <laughs> and with your hands tied. Standard in. pose. Yeah. Ha ah, ha. Ah. Be natural. Be sit gracefully. of course sit uh, with humility but be natural it can i can sit this way. you can sit like this you can slightly gesticulate as you talk while we are explaining the point don't our hands naturally move a little that bit that also will help to put a point or yeah. think more yeah and this makes you look natural in fact this is all artificial robotic yeah 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 robot you got the word absolutely <coughs> then only at one place by the way because i have already shared this but when ponzi scheme was being discussed ponzi hmm. scheme once again atha ha ani see the context huh? madam said do you know about ponzi schemes tujha kapal atha i am aware of ponzi schemes 
म्हणजे लाईक यु आर लाईक रिटॉर्टिंग वॉट आर यू आस्किंग असं असं तो नकळत होत हे आपले मराठी मॅनर्स आहेत खास जन्मसिद्ध हक्क आहे व तो मी बजाविनच काउंटर क्वेश्चन टू सर आर यू आस्किंग इन इंडियन और एनी अदर कॉन्टेक्स्ट बिकॉज सर आय डेंट गेट इट बिकॉज सोशल रिफॉर्म्स आय एट द वर्ल्ड लेवल ऑर फॉर इंडिया लेवल so i just wanted mm. will it be fine to give a world level view also but i'll rephrase no but from interview technique point of view i am saying instead of presenting that as a question turn it into a statement opportunity statement okay okay, okay. not a question asking the question back to the panel uh, may not be welcome during the interview so instead of saying in what context you say sir i presume you are asking in the context of india or sir i take it that this is in the context of the world and then proceed with that sir no counter question to the panel no. then some discussion on abolition of slavery by law law as an enabling provision you gave an example that slavery was abolished in us by law that is not true slavery was abolished by presidential order right in the midst of the civil war lincoln issued a presidential order which under us constitution the president has the authority mm-hmm. to abolish slavery it is 1861 the year was 1861 you also made a statement that chief ministers are elected heads of state basically even a upsc aspirant saying this will not be appreciated but especially llb person chief ministers are heads of government oh. and governors are heads of state these are constitutionally very important yes. words so you can't come up and say chief ministers Head are elected government. heads of state I mean, what is trying to say avoid loose use of words haan, yes. yeah precision I'll definitely avoid precision yes. especially yes. from a law person and also any upsc aspirant i, d- I didn't yes. get it only sir haan. thanks for mentioning mm. i did not get it only till now i was thinking that was a correct statement mm. to make mm. yeah i'll be then uh, you did a moot court in kerala which today we couldn't cover mm. okay but there would be questions, questions did you travel to kerala then yes sir which yeah, place uh in tiruvannapuram only trivandrum only yes. so there would be questions what did you yes. see in tiruvannantapuram did you see the padmanabh swami temple mm-hmm. no no i ah. so whatever i mean hmm. the, they can the, ask for the subject yeah. also of ah. the mood board yeah and also what i would have enjoyed was to discuss stand up comedy with you mm. but there also we were short on time sir but who stand up comedy do you like so it keeps on changing but currently abhishek upmanyu is one individual who's work i like so it, I, i mean i'm getting a feel that you don't seem to watch english stand up comedy shows i do watch i do watch sir and there are many in english for that matter for example uh, kevin hart uh, dave chapel uh, chris rock was also uh, chris rock i would accept ha other names sir, i won't rate them still as top class but chris rock yes <laughs> chris rock is and many others so there would be discussion yes. overall on this and just last small uh, point uh, also brush up on maharashtra issues so i suppose uh, you were there when i conducted a special session for candidates from maharashtra pardon sir i i had uh, saw your two videos on it sir hmm. but uh, latest one no sir i am you not. can talk to swapnil okay, she will send you the link that may at least be orientation hmm. not everything can certainly be Briefing. covered yeah but orientation and some little about maratha history the answers need to be precise especially satara and question on two chatrapati uh, was not up to the mark huh? the answer was not up to the mark i should not have gone much historical on that no 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 i am saying precision of the answer 
His question was why two why centers? Two Gadi. Hmm. Why two? Hmm. So actually, after Chhatrapati Rajaram, Tarabai hmm. fought Mughals. Mughals, yes. Because the son of Chhatrapati Sambhaji was arrested by the Mughals. By the Mughals. So when he was released in 1707, that is Shahu, hmm. he told all Maratha Sardars to join him. But Tarabai wanted her son, who she had named after Shivaji. Shivaji. Hmm. She wanted that Shivaji to become the Chhatrapati. Chhatrapati. So there was a yeah. fight, which was settled on this point. Right? And just la last point. Uh, this relationship between Chhatrapati and Peshwas, mm. you actually started out right, but didn't carry it through. The structure of Maratha Empire has Chhatrapati at the top. So, Chhatrapati is head of state. And Peshwa is first among equals of the cabinet, cabinet. Ashtapradhan. Ashtapradhan. Yes, yes. So, Peshwa became head of government. And if you remember, indeed the original word for Peshwa is Panta Pradhan. Panta Pradhan. Mm. So and it was all? Shahu who trusted Peshwa mm. and allowed him to uh, uh, look after all administration. Mm. You were saying something? No, I said that's how the Marathi is called uh, Prime Minister Panta Pradhan. Huh. Mm. No. Mm. Prime Minister will be Panta mm. Pradhan. Panta Pradhan. Excellent. तसेच एक दहिवडीचे ऍडव्होकेट भास्कर गुंडगे म्हणून आहेत माहिती आहे माझे सुलतेच आहेत सुलते तुझे छान कसे आहेत सध्या त्या व्यवस्थित आहेत सध्या रिटायर्डच आहेत म्हणजे पॉलिटिक्स पासून व्हेरी गुड हो पण छान माणूस आमची मला लक्षात आहेत माझं पोस्टिंग होतं तेव्हापासून हा ना ते बोललेले मला ते भेटशील सरांना म्हणे एकदम देणार आहे म्हणजे छान कन्वे हिम माय रिगार्ड्स डेफिनेटली सर डेफिनेटली अँड बेस्ड ऑन टुडेज इंटरव्ह्यू द स्कोर विल बी or slightly above 170. So, it is already good. With UPSC, anything above 160 begins to be good. But, since we have time on hand with all this, go for 200 plus. Definitely, sir. I will try. Right? Yes. You have everything in you to do so. 100 plus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In fact, your responsibility mm -hmm. is to sustain the first impression you give. Definitely. The moment you walk in, Huh? I must tell you, the moment you walk in, there is this first impression of a capable, yes. confident youngster who the panel would like to see such officers. I mean, panel would like to see this person become officer. So, that is the first impression you are giving. Next 30 minutes that follow will be your responsibility to, maintain to yeah, sustain that impression. Right? All the very best. <laughs> Sir, uh, it was quite natural, but I was not smiling very much. No, it was all But you were okay. I mean, you were not very grim or something. Uh, Apart from that occasional <laughs> atya. <laughs> but otherwise, I was not very miskil. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you.